everyone. Real quick, I wanted to mash up a couple ideas for you this week. So the first is, uh, I just finished reading this awesome, awesome book. It's called Legacy by James Kerr, and it's 15 lessons the All Blacks can teach us about life and business. Uh, now, as a Kiwi, it makes my heart sing that this is the ideal of masculinity that New Zealand is putting out there to the world. And, um, you know, there's some great lessons around humility and uh, grace and integrity uh, and all these words that we love to talk about. And um, so really, really awesome book. But I think that like one of the really interesting things about the All Blacks and why I find them so fascinating as a, as a case study is that you have a team that has had an 86% winning record over a 100-year period. So they've, they've been a team for a century and, and had this incredible winning record. And they're just this incredible study in intergenerational high performance. So not only do we have one team that's able to perform to a, a high level, but we're able to build that culture of transitioning people through that team over an extended period of time and still maintain that level of high performance. And so James Kerr goes into that in, in the book. And um, and there's been many, many studies done on the All Blacks. Uh, I, as I said, I find them fascinating as a, as a case study. So go and dig into that one. But the second thing that happened was I was on the phone this morning with a client and we were talking about um, this concept of transition engineering. And uh, so transition engineering is all about understanding that the energy environment that we're living in today globally needs to shift dramatically. So uh, the way I think about it is that it kind of boils down to for every unit of energy that we put into generating energy, how much are we getting out? And uh, at the, the start of kerosene and crude oil and, and these sorts of technologies coming online, um, we were looking at about a one to three ratio. What's happening is that that ratio is declining over time. And we're now in a position where even uh, if you start to look at things like wind and hydro and some of those more sustainable technologies, um, what you find is that actually we're getting much closer to a one to one ratio. And so it's this idea that whilst we're going through some of the most complex uh, change as a species with climate change and these pressures that are that are uh, that are upon us we're also in an environment where uh, our energy patterns our energy usage our energy generation the way we think about energy all of that needs to change as well and so it's this big kind of gnarly knot and transition engineering is really focused on that problem how do we transition away from these technologies where we're getting close to break even and transition into um, a world where uh, we're potentially having to respond to uh, declining economy. I was going to say negative growth, and that always just sounds like a dumb thing to say, but uh, where we're transitioning into an environment of decline. Um, and and so these two things kind of came together this morning in this conversation with this client where we were we were talking about in a world where you no longer have that growth pattern. Uh, and all of the dynamics that go around that uh, with going out, big projects, you know, big projects failing, waste, people writing it off kind of onto the next thing, that, that growth pattern mindset. Once you kind of come over that hurdle and you start into that avenue of decline and you start into a world where, where things are, are on, on the downhill, uh, what happens is that you must transition to longer term relationships and more collaborative environments because you can't just you can't continue to compete. Growth mindset is a lot about competition and that continuous competition for growth and and um, and gains. And then once we start to dip over that hurdle, what does it look like where we're in an economy um, and we're in a, an environment in decline? And and the the way that we start to untangle some of these problems is going to become much more focused on relationships, on long term relationships. And about really knitting together the teams of the people that we need to solve these big problems. And so where these two things came together was here, on the one hand, we have in high performance sport, a really interesting example of what does it take to build a team long term and to continue to cultivate that culture. And within our world today, we have this dynamic that says we're moving into an environment that's going to favor those tightly knit uh, relationship driven conversations and, and teams and so the question really comes well what does it look like to build a hundred year team and that really sort of stopped me in my tracks because you know even in my own practice I'm often so focused in bringing people together to kick something off we're so focused on starting the new thing uh, that at the same time we're not necessarily fully cognizant or always aware of 
what does this look like? Not just three or five years out in, in the CEO cycle, but uh, but what is it? what would it look like to cultivate that environment over 100 years? What are the pieces that we need to be putting in place around foundational skills, what it means to be a leader, uh, you know, the, the communication and the inter-team dynamics? What does it look like to build that culture to stand the test of time, to last 100 years? And I think it's a really, really interesting question around where we start to favor and prioritize those longer term relationships, those lo- that longer term thinking. Uh, Simon Sinek talks about it in his new book, The Infinite Game. He's talking about leadership that is looking beyond that CEO cycle, beyond that three to five year window that we are so incentivized for uh, and into five, 10, 20, 50, 100 year cycles around leaving things in a better place than when we found them. Uh, and and the, the, these themes that come through, certainly All Blacks, one of the uh, one of the core values that James Kerr talks about in the book is around leaving the jersey in a better place than where you, where you found it. Um, this idea of custodianship, what does it look like to not not to represent as yourself and as an individual, but actually the legacy and this idea that the legacy is more imposing than the person standing in front of you. So I'm really curious to hear uh, what you're doing in this space around building a team that stands the test of time, not just for the individual project or, um, or coming together for the next couple of years whilst you happen to be in the same position. What does it look like to build a team that lasts the test of time? What would it look like to build a 100-year team? I think we've all been there. We've, we've, if we're lucky enough, a lot of us have been in that dream team where uh, you know, that, that group of people comes together and it's just magic. Uh, and then it, it transitions away and that's, that's always a shame. But what would it look like to continue to refresh and to bring people into that culture and to build that team that stands the test of time, that really starts to tackle some of these longer term uh, issues, some of the strategic thinking that's required, some of that long view stuff, what does that look like if we start to bring it into the way that we cultivate our environment today, the way that we induct people into that team? How do we bring them on board? How do we induct them into this way of thinking, this way of working, um, this way of being? And then how do we maintain those standards over time? How do we continue to reinforce that culture over time? How do we do these things in a way that means that we can outlast the churn of those individual team members but also outlast ourselves. So uh, one of the things that I did pick up from the book, and I'll leave you with this um, b- before I go, but the uh, one of one of the things I did pick up from this book was that uh, every All Black, when they start, is issued with a small leather-bound black book. Uh, and in it, you open the first page, and you see on the first page the uh, jersey, the All Black jersey from the original, the early All Black teams. And that original jersey is there in, in a pictorial format. And then you turn the page, and the next page is another jersey. And it's the jersey of the team that came after. And so this book is, is a beautiful collection of jerseys and, and of that legacy and that understanding of the history that's gone before and, uh, and the, the mana that, that, that's, that need, that's wanting to be upheld. This is, this is your legacy. This is what you're here to do. And then towards the end of the book, there are a number of blank pages. And it's really about what's the story that you will write as the team, as, as this new person being inducted into this beautiful legacy of um, leadership and high performance. What does that look like, not only for those who've come before, but, but for where you want to take the jersey and where you want to leave that legacy? So, uh, yeah, I wanted to share that today. Uh, great book, by the way. It's on, now on my mandatory reading list for, for leaders. Um, great book, but but also this concept of what does it look like to build a 100-year team because I think all too often it gets very easy to uh, focus on what we've got to do in the here and now, and it's this is this is that calling for you to take a step back, do a bit of a perspective shift, uh, and to think beyond the immediate, and to think well beyond the immediate. What does it look like to build a 100-year team? So I'll leave you with that. I would love comments, emails, suggestions below. Um, love to hear your opinion on the matter. Let me know some of the tools and techniques that you're using uh, and, and maybe where you've seen stories of this stuff happening before. I would love to hear from you. So uh, yeah, 
that's it from me this week. I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day. And I'll see you again real soon.